What's up everyone, back for another beer review and today is the 10th and final day of the second annual 10 Days of Pumpkin here on the channel. And it's also Halloween, so to celebrate such a special occasion, I'll be reviewing a beer from the Avery Brewing Company, and they're out of Boulder, Colorado, and this is their Rumpkin, and this is a part of their annual barrel series, and this is also the 2016 vintage. So this is an Imperial Pumpkin Ale that is brewed with pumpkin and spices. Those spices are nutmeg, cinnamon, and ginger. And then it is aged in rum barrels, comes in at 17.5% alcohol by volume. No IBUs list in time of review. This bottle is just over three years old. And if we want to get a little bit more exact, this beer is about 38 months old at the time of review. So full disclosure. I have had this one before. I actually have had a couple different vintages. I think the 2015 vintage, and I think I had the 2017 vintage, and having those fresh, delicious, delicious pumpkin beers. Uh, probably one of my favorite pumpkin beers of all time was the 2015 uh, vintage. This says is batch number six, but uh, again, they have a bottle on date of August 17, 2016. And uh, yeah, I don't know what the age is going to do to this beer. I'd imagine the spices are going to die out a little bit, but you have a 17.5% uh, Imperial Pumpkin Ale aged in rum barrels with pumpkin spices and whatnot. So I don't know. Fresh, this was awesome. We'll see how this one is with uh, over three years on it. So let's crack this one open, see what we got going on, and uh, go from there. So, ooh, yeah, big, big hiss. Ooh, it rushed up pretty... I don't know if you guys saw it rushed up almost right to the top. Hopefully you're going to pour no, no, no flakes into my uh, beer here. So let's give this a pour if we can. We'll just go like that. Not trying to get crazy. You know what I mean? This is a big beer, big beer. So uh, give it a nice swirl here. So, wow, I can smell that. And holy crap, does that smell super malty and just like bourbon-esque. Um, so as you can see, this pours out a, uh, number one, there's a lot of particulates floating around for sure. Number two, it has this really deep, like copperish orange con uh, color, had about a half finger of this off white into a slightly cream colored head. It is now dissipated to a thin film. Let's see the legs. There's drapes on here, not legs. It's not going to come off on camera, but that is just crazy amount of alcohol legs. Yeah. Anyway, let's get a nose on it. Wow. That smells barley wine-esque tons of malt like an amazing amount of malt there's an earthiness that i would attribute to the pumpkin itself there is a there's a booze component too like in the nostrils as i'm smelling it definitely has like a fusel alcohol type of thing in the aroma but super malt forward like picture a huge uh, basically English barley wine that has the the kind of notes in here are very similar to that lots of like just caramelized sugar big sugar notes uh dark fruits you know, figs and plums and dates raisiny aspect to this one as well a lot of accentuated vanilla from the barrel and there is some spiciness don't know if it's necessarily coming from like the rum spiciness or the spiciness itself it's more of like the cinnamon nutmeg as opposed to ginger but I'm getting the spirit, a little bit of oak tannin as well. But man, th this base, if I was just doing this blind, I'd be like, this is a huge English barley wine. Like a, I, I'd probably say barrel-aged English barley wine as I'm smelling it right now. The spices aren't that pronounced and that big and that bold that I could tell you this has a pumpkin vibe to it. This does not really smell like a pumpkin ale, so to speak. <sighs> Got a little bit of like a, a black tea note there too. Could have a slight, well, it's probably oxidized to a certain degree, getting a little bit like the black tea. But overall, it smells really good. It just smells like a big imperial, like I said, it just smells like a big English barley wine that's in barrel age, and it smells quite tasty. Wouldn't necessarily call it a pumpkin ale, but as is, I enjoy the aroma, so let's get into the taste. Cheers, everyone. Oh, man. That's fucking so good. That's delicious. First things first, over three years, aged and um, it's 17.5%. You can't kind of, you can't really get away from that. What I say, 
drinks like 17 and a half, probably no, 14, 15, a couple percentage points lower. But when you're talking about 13, 14, or 17, kind of all run together. It's big boozy beer. So it is warming in the chest, into the stomach. You can taste it on the palate. It's not really like astringent, but it's definitely noticeable. The beer is a little bit thinner than I anticipate at 17.5. I'd say this is like lower side of full body, higher side of medium body. So it is a bit thin. Shout out to Paul over at PA Brunus, but it's, does, it's a bit thin. I remember this one being a little bit bigger in the body. Mouthfeel. It still has a lot of carbonation to it, so it's moderately carbonated. Soft, smooth, not necessarily creamy, but I'd say the body and mouthfeel are solid. Not anything that's going to blow your mind, but just solid. The taste, though, I honestly, again, if I was doing this as a whodunit beer review, blind beer review, mystery beer review on my channel, I would say this drink like an English barley wine that has been barrel aged. I can't, and then right now I can't really tell you this rum. I'm getting a spiciness. But knowing that there's spices in here, I think it's more attributed to the spiciness of the actual spices themselves as opposed to the rum barrel. Right up front, caramel, toffee, a little bit of butterscotch. Yeah, it's just all the crazy caramelized sugar you, sugar you ever wanted. As it starts heading through the palate... That, that dried fruit, I'm getting more of like a, a sweet, dr like dried cherry, uh, more of like a raisin thing too. Um, that kind of hits me. Then right in the middle of the palate, the vanilla kind of kicks in from the barrels. And you get a little little touch of the spirit itself. But again, I would just say it has like a generic spirit kick. Doesn't really taste exactly like rum, uh, but it also doesn't taste like bourbon. Just I would just say this is a barrel age, and I would not specifically try to pick this out if I was doing it blind. But the spiciness might let me lean towards rum. But th that that ginger and or not ginger, the um, cinnamon and nutmeg kind of hit as well, all at the same time. As it continues on through the palate and finishes, it dries out a decent amount too. Like there's a semi-dry finish to this one. Again, I would attribute this one to the spices uh, along with the alcohol. And maybe even the oak tannins. And then it finishes with a little bit of residual sweetness. It's a big beer. It's a big beer, but it's a damn tasty beer. It's a sipper beer. It's a beer that I definitely want to crack this open and drink it over the course of an hour, hour and a half, two hours. And take small sips and just kind of enjoy the nuances and subtleties of each individual flavor. And uh, again, I've had this one fresh. And fresh, this was a bit more boozy. This was more spice forward, and I think I got more of like a pumpkin L uh, kind of feel to the beer. But this one aged is turning more of like an English barley wine with accentuations of the pumpkin, the spices, and the barrel itself. So depending upon what you enjoy, you might want to age this one and you might not. But uh, as far as the rating goes on Avery's um, Rumpkin, part of their annual barrel series, the 2018 Vintage, I'm going to go straight 4.5 out of 5. This is a damn tasty, quite delicious Imperial Pumpkin Ale that's brewed with pumpkins and spices and then aged in rum barrels, the whole nine. It's really good. Uh, when it comes to what do I prefer in this situation, it all depends, like I said, on how you're feeling at the time or what you want out of a beer. I think fresh you're going to get an Imperial Pumpkin Ale that has a pretty big blast of the rum barrel. That Fresh, this one's going to pop with the spices, pop with the booziness. It's going to drink more like an Imperial Pumpkin Ale with you know all those things going on. I think Fresh, this drinks more like an English barley wine or like an English old ale that has those notes, but very subtle and uh, minute and just dialed back. So I think I like them both equally. I think push comes to shove. I would go with the fresh rumpkin over the aged, but I think the aged one is a completely different beast, and I'm not sure it's really fair to compare them at this point. But regardless, on its own, this is a 4.5 out of 5. It's a delicious beer. So if you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it. If you've had this one before aged, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this one because, yeah, I'm, I'm quite surprised at how different it is, but I kind of expected that it wouldn't taste like it you know, did fresh with the spices and the barrel aged and everything. So, yeah. Uh, price and availability, this is where... Everyone's going to differ on whether this is worth the cost or not. I believe I paid either $13.99 or $14.99 for the single bottle. And a lot of you are saying, what, $15 for a 12-ounce bottle? Take into consideration this is 17.5%. This is like th uh, three and a half times the, uh, you know, as far as just the alcohol content, three and a half times uh, the amount of a 5% 12-ounce can or bottle. So it's like three and a half beers in one. Number two, 
they're brewing it with pumpkins, they're brewing it with spices, and they're aging this in rum barrels probably for at least a year or close to it. And when you take all those things into consideration, is $14 or $15 worth it? For me personally, it is. To treat yourself, this is not a beer that I'm going to buy, you know, six bottles every time it's released and, what you know, sit on them. I might buy one or two, drink one fresh, age one. But for $14 or $15 bucks a bottle, I think Avery has one of the best barrel programs in the game. And on top of that, I think the quality of their beers kind of dictates the price point. And if people weren't buying them at $14, $15 a bottle, then they would not sell and people just wouldn't grab them. So there has to be something that said the, for the, you know, for the fact that they charge the prices that they do and people still buy them. So I think it's a quality beer at a, a solid price for what you get. Now, if you don't think that's a quality price, I totally get it. I totally understand. Uh, but that's the beauty about craft beer, right? I always say that's the beauty about craft beer, but it is. There's so many beers out there. If you don't want to spend the 15, 14, 15 bucks on this bottle, then you don't have to. You can spend your 14, 15 bucks on a 12 pack of something or whatever, right? So uh, availability, I don't know where this gets distro um, as far as their distribution goes when, when it comes to Avery. I know there are a bunch of different states, but I don't know if it gets to all the distribution markets that they have. Um, I've seen this beer, you know, here in my neck of the woods, but this is a 2016, and this was on the shelf of my local Premier Gourmet. They had some that I th they had left over, and maybe they saved to bust them out. But I, I have not seen the 2019 in my area. I've only seen the vintages 2016, 2018. So I don't know if the 2019 showed up here, and I don't know how frequently it does get out to their distro areas, but I'd imagine if you see Avery, you probably see this one or their pumpkin, which is uh, very similar to this one, but aged in uh, uh, Kentucky bourbon barrels as opposed to uh, rum barrels. So uh, I think the price and availability is good for this one. Uh, I know a lot of people like this. A lot of my uh, friends and, and fellow beer tubers really dig this one, and I do too. So yeah, I think overall it's worth it. Uh, at the end of the day, though, it's just one of those beers where it's kind of a treat for me. Spend 15 bucks, grab it, and go from there. So that wraps up another 10 days of pumpkin. It was This was the second annual one. A lot of good feedback. A lot of people enjoy the reviews. I enjoy doing this every year. So next year, come back for the third annual um, 10 days of pumpkin. Now, I will say this. If anybody out there wants me to try local or can get your hands on something that like people would like me to try, reach out to me. We can definitely do some kind of trade next year around the 10 Days of Pumpkin. I do want to review Saucony Creek's uh, Maple Mistress, one of my favorite like pumpkin squash, you know, yam type of beers. That was amazing. I had that like for the first time five years ago. So maybe Matt over Matt's Beer Reviews or Paul over at PA Brewing is going to hook me up with that one. We'll do a trade or whatever. Um, I also want to do Cigar City's Good Gourd. Probably grab either Saranac or Sam Adams or maybe Brooklyn's uh, offering because I haven't reviewed those yet. But yeah, I, I really enjoy doing this and there's so many pumpkin beers out there. I think this, this will probably last for another three to five years. As long as I can get 10 pumpkin beers, 10 unique different pumpkin beers each year, I'm going to do so and I will do the 10 Days of Pumpkin. Uh, you might see some reviews this year in November that are pumpkin, yam, squash beers. And uh, just because I do the 10 days, days of pumpkin doesn't mean I'm not going to review any more pumpkin beers. It just means probably unlikely I will, but there might be a uh, review here or there that I do in November. So yeah, anyway, thanks to everybody for the support, not only on the channel, but for the days, 10 days of pumpkin. It's been a great time. And uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't wait for next year's already. I can't believe this is already over, but that happens. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I think my favorite beer uh, over the course of the 10 days, this is up there. This is probably up there. The Prairie Basic Becky was really good. I really dug for just like a regular no frills kind of pumpkin beer. The Master of Pumpkins from Shrugs is really good. So yeah, I would recommend most of the beers I drank this year. I think they were all pretty, pretty solid. Anyway, this has been going on long enough. Enjoy your Halloween. Hopefully you get a lot of trick-or-treaters and you have a great time. Um, yeah, I'm done here. Take it easy, everyone. Cheers.